My name is David Johnson from Denison Yachting. I am currently on board the 85 foot JFA named NDSE here in Charleston, South Carolina. Yesterday, I was very fortunate and I had the opportunity to take the NDSE out sailing yesterday with the uh, captain and crew. Perfect conditions here. The boat is not only a, a performance boat, we were easily sailing at 10 knots in a light breeze. I was able to notice, obviously, how well the boat was constructed. The owner chose aluminum because of the reliability and the strength. This boat was built to go around the world, specifically to Antarctica. The owner chose aluminum because of the strength, the lightweight, and the comfort under sail. And JFA has done an incredible job building this hull. I have to say that the seams are flawless when you look at the paint. No question about it, this really is the nicest large catamaran for sale in the world right now. Throughout the course of today's walkthrough, we're going to have Captain Duarte Montiero de Silva with us. My name is Duarte Monteiro de Silva. I come from the Azores Islands, part of Portugal, and are located in the middle of the North Atlantic. Long before the owner built the NDSE, he already completed a circumnavigation on another boat. You knew that it was a dream of his to take a boat to Antarctica and you wanted to be there with him when he did that. Since the beginning I was always dreaming. I hope when he gets there that I will be invited. And then I was uh, lucky to, to be invited actually to be the captain on board for, for the trip. In the beginning I was a little bit concerned because it's a big responsibility to take uh, to this kind of latitude and was a place that I never sailed. And then I accepted it and we did it and uh, it did, did very well. JFA is a shipyard in Concarneau in the uh, northern region in France, famous for building pedigree catamarans. They've built two of these 86 Long Island sailing catamarans. They're both built out of aluminum these guys launched the boat at the JFA shipyard in north of France, did a quick shakedown cruise in the Med, Caribbean season, back to the shipyard, and then Still all the way down to Antarctica in the first year of this vessel being launched. Right now, standing here in the main salon, this one is a great use of space. Fully operational lower helm here. We've got four guest cabins, an on-deck master cabin that is full beam, it's got a forward view and down on the lower levels, we've got two large VIP cabins and another cabin that's got three beds in it that's for the children. And this boat's all about family, travel and adventure. We'll start today's tour here on the Flybridge where the guests will be hanging out most of the time couple things that jump out at me right away. First, we've got the clotheslines here, which are, which are <laughs> obviously, but you need something like this. It's really nice, so why not have them? This is a great place. Something that you don't see on a lot of catamarans is a really well-designed drainage system. And I see right there where you're standing, what is like kind of like a channel that's cut into the aft section, works its way around, and then it gets quite deep there and you have a really good drain rather than the water just running down the stairs. And I'd like to point out also that you have a, a little door here that'll flip over and you can cover that whole area right there. Really just, you know, sectioning that off. So obviously multiple areas on board the boat for dining. This is the one that has the best view, I would say, and also the nicest breeze. Great seating up here. We've got storage under all this area here. Yes. And under the settee up here, we've also got two refrigerator drawers. And one final thing, while we're standing back here, I'm looking at this hard top. This is a substantial part of the boat. I see that it's, you know, you've got the frames coming down, the supports, it's built in solid fiberglass. It's quite good because it's also quite useful when you're dropping the mainsail, mm -hmm. so you can work uh, on the boom easily. You feel safe, you can work and walk. And then that's where we have all the solar panels mm -hmm. uh, for the electricity. Walking forward on the flybridge, we're getting up to the helm area, I see a really nice uh, complement of Harkin winches and Furuno and B&G equipment. I think this boat is very well equipped to handle every condition. For instance, on the way up here, you guys hit 16 knots under sail. Uh, coming up from Fort Lauderdale recently, uh, is that the, the, the top speed you've seen? Yeah, mostly it's uh, been around that, the top uh, speed, 16, 18. Mm -hmm. At, 18, uh, 18 yes. is very impressive for an 85-foot catamaran. What were the conditions? 
We were sailing uh, with 30 knots uh, downwind, so that would help also with uh, mm -hmm. a bit nice swell pushing us uh, along. But uh, the boat sails uh, easily and very comfortable uh, around 10 to 12 knots and you don't feel that you are pushing the boat ever. You have a good balance always between the sails and uh, the sea conditions. So it's quite a good thing to be so high up. Also helps uh, to have a good visibility through the horizon. As you can see here, we have a BNG and two Foruno displays. They are completely independent uh, systems. That means they have their own GPS antenna, radar, and uh, wind indicators. Also, we have two independent autopilots. We also have a FLIR uh, camera. Over here, we have a ODS. It's an ocean data system that uh, records all the values of tensions on the masts. Now that we finished up here on the flybridge, we're gonna jump down to the waterline and take a look at the swim platform. One of the first things I noticed coming down is that we've got the shore power running out to the dock over here, 50 hertz, single phase with a shore power converter. And then we have this beautiful shower right here. This might be one of the nicest I've seen. Beautiful control right here. Uh, hot water hooked up to this? Yes, there cold is. And, wa and yep. hot water, yeah. Is there a ladder or just a railing that, that, uh, yes, that goes there in there? Yes, there is a swimming ladder that fits on these two um, holes. This one is for a small platform. Gangway on, kind of. And then we have a long one that can go from there that is almost three meters uh, long. Okay, like a pass rail to go yeah, up to the docks. Pass, okay. Uh, yeah. And this is a very, very nice idea right here. This is a uh, full-size sink mm -hmm. that you can store your shampoo, soaps, anything you need for the shower. Mm -hmm. But it's also a full-size oh. sink that you can have a little Hose here and rinse off your, your snorkels, masks, fins, fish if you're going to catch some fish along fish. the way. Mm -hmm. um, also hot water here. As also well. cold and water. Walking back up to the aft deck, can't help but notice the uh, AB 16 foot tender right here. When you were back at the uh, shipyard a couple months the ago, time, yeah. you, uh, you enhanced the capacity. Yes. of the, the lifting capacity. So now these arms are, uh, are bigger, so we were able to, um, to go up in size in tender, so now we have this uh, 16 uh, feet tender. It was a smaller tender that you were able to move the, the iceberg with. Yes, that was the Three hours the smaller pushing one. iceberg. Yes. Yeah. So outboard of the tender, port and starboard are two access hatches for the engine rooms, which we're gonna check out next. On this uh, boat, we have uh, two um, different engine rooms, one on starboard, one on port. Correctly, we are on the starboard one. Over here, we have uh, our electrical board. We have 220s and 24 volt uh, systems. Here is the shore power converter. It's always converts to what the boat needs. Over here, we have uh, our two water makers. We have uh, our Onan generator of 19 kilowatts and the Yanmar 400 horsepower uh, engine. So the main difference from uh, this engine room on starboard to the port side, it's uh, exactly where we have our two water makers. We have the two air conditioning compressors and the uh, full heater pump that can warm up the boat very quickly, yeah. very good in cold climates. This is a, uh, a really nice aft deck with a sizable dining area here. It's a, a nice table that you can fit easily uh, six people very comfortable around it. Very nice. And I noticed there's a nice little day bed over on the side over there as well. There's that nice windscreen right there protecting uh, anybody that wants to read a book. It just keeps them protected from the elements. We have a daily used toilet. If you are just coming from a swim, you don't need to go inside. You can use that one. And then of course this whole aft deck can be enclosed if you wanted to. Exactly. With sunshade or, or the eyes and glass, which is a, a really nice option. So as you can see here, we have the, this long seat that uh, is very functional because you can open, you have a storage that you can access from the other side. We have the diving bottles, we have a spare outboarder and a few jerry cans for fuel for the dinghy. It's a really nice place to store the uh, dive tanks because it's really easy to just load them up into the tender, lower the tender and take off on a dive. I'd like to talk a little bit about what we have underfoot here. We've got a few deck hatches that are, that are opened up, showing a, a wide variety of safety equipment, storage. That we can launch the, the live rafts. We have our grab bags and uh, all that safety stuff. 
uh, on this side from the fishing gear to the cleaning products. Over here we have a small uh, another fridge unit that we sometimes use more for long uh, crossings. So it's like a mobile fridge. Yes. It's a really, really nice unit. Yeah. Okay. And uh, on that one we have a lot of our heavy spares from different uh, pumps. And they're big volume spaces. Yes. So the next area that we're going to look at is the foredeck. I'd like to point out that the NDSC has got a uh, really nice Lumar windlass here. This one's got 120 meters of chain, got a nice sail layout here. First we have a stay sail, then Genoa, and then we have all the way forward on that uh, boss sprit. That's where we attach our Code Zero. That has a good feature because it's also hydraulic uh, power to furl in and furl out. So we can, in less than a minute, we can furl the Code Zero in. It's very practical to use. NDSC actually has a proper uh, workshop down here in the forward bilge. This one has access to the dive compressor, bow thruster, and it's got a really nice workbench and all the spares are also stored down here. Do you even have a vice down there? Everything. I thought, yeah, there's even a vice <laughs> on the bench. On our starboard side uh, for peak, we find all our ropes for the different sails, plus the diving uh, gear is also underneath. On this central uh, forward area, we have three uh, lockers. On this one, we have uh, all the toys and the two spinnaker sails, the Code Zero and the symmetrical spinnaker. And on the third one, that's where we keep the gangways, plus our fenders. Right now, we're standing on top of the master cabin. Um, this is a really nice place to, to relax. You're obviously going to be dry up here. Owner can come out here. There is a full bimini that covers this area. You've got a set of poles that go in there and also right here. This whole area can be shaded. One of my favorite things is how easy it is to get out behind the wheel and I just uh, come down easily. I can be on the bow to look at the sails, to be able to transmit any information to the people that are uh, on the cockpit. And uh, that's a very easy, uh, easy maneuver to do. So now that we've finished up on the exterior, let's head on inside and have a look at the salon. So one thing I noticed in here right away is, is the beam. Obviously, we've got a boat that's almost 40 feet wide. You're going to have a really large salon. This one has ample volume and uh, lots of storage. Over here on the starboard side, we've got a very large uh, drinks bar, not to be confused with the full-size galley that's down on the lower deck. We've got an ice machine, a full-size drinks refrigerator, sink here that's actually got a nice feature, which is a uh, filtered water right there, so you can fill your water bottles from this tap if you want to. On the inboard side of the wet bar, we've got a very nice storage area. So this is for all your wine glasses, the first of two seating areas here in the salon is this forward area on the starboard side. This is a nice L-shaped settee, which got storage underneath all the cushions here. This area is just for uh, general relaxing, but it also makes a great place to sit if you're watching a movie on the TV that's gonna pop up over there on the outboard side of the dining table. So this TV, controlled by this remote that I have right here, it's gonna pop up on the outboard side. Here you've got a dining table that's for uh, eight people. No matter where you're sitting in the main salon, it's very obvious that you've got large windows all around you flooding this area with natural light. Down here we can find almost the same uh, instruments that above, but uh, we down here we use more to plan the trip. So uh, over here we have our uh, main computer that it's connect uh, to the satellite communications. Uh, over here we have our PLC that controls all the alarms that can come up. We can see it uh, on this page, just a few feet away from the nav station. Over here, we have some additional controls on this cupboard, like the generator uh, start uh, and stop, the IES and the fire central system. And then, as you're going to find on just about every other yacht in the world, on the main distribution panel, we're going to have all the, the breakers for all the main systems on board, the water maker controls, and a variety of other options here as well. The next space that we're going to show you is the master cabin. I'm just a few steps forward of the main salon. It's a wonderful space, easy access up to the foredeck, and a wonderful seating area over here. The largest item you're going to find here in the master cabin is the bed. It's a uh, king-size bed. It's got a beautiful view looking out forward across the foredeck. And you can also watch a movie. The TV is going to pop up right in front of you. 
Moving over to the starboard side, I'd like to point out that there's a uh, settee over here, large enough for three people, lots of room underneath. The uh, owner also has his nice workstation right here. And the boat has a, an amazing sound system. Just in this room right here alone, you're gonna find four Bang & Olsen speakers, and you'll find those speakers throughout the rest of the boat. Walking over to the port side, I'd like to point out that there's a um, large amount of uh, wall storage. And of course, you've got the stairs right here that are gonna bring you right up to your private balcony on the foredeck. Uh, really nice setup right here, watertight door. And then as we transition over to the port a little bit more, more storage space and stairs that are gonna bring you right down to the ensuite. Stepping into the ensuite, you'll first notice the two his and her vanities and also just a lot of storage underneath the vanity area. Not only is there a separate stall for the head, adjacent to that, there's another stall for a rainfall shower. So now that I've shown you the master, there are three other guest accommodations that I'd like to show you. And we'll start over here on the port side. Turning aft at the base of the stairwell, we walk into the VIP cabin. First thing you're gonna notice is the queen size bed with storage underneath. You, uh, you see some more of those beautiful Bang & Olsen uh, speakers down here. Forward of the desk that we see here on the port side, you'll find the entrance to the head with a very nice uh, fully enclosed shower. Walking forward from this VIP, we're gonna head into what is traditionally known as the twin cabin, but this one is oversized and it actually has three uh, twin beds in here. Um, this is an area that was used by the current owners for their, their children uh, when they were doing long passages. Uh, it's, it's much larger than a typical cabin. You could put bunk beds in here if you wanted to, or you could uh, just turn this into more of a seating area. I'd like to point out how quiet these uh, cabins are. Once the door is closed here, it's like in your own little zone now. This little desk right here works out really nice if the kids are doing some schoolwork or something. Uh, another area here where you've got multiple USB and HDMI outlets here, power outlets. You got a nice TV right here that'll fold out for the uh, kids or any guests that are watching any movies at night. All the way forward in here is another private ensuite head and shower. Now that I've shown you the port side accommodations, there's one more cabin I'd like to point out, which is over on the starboard side of the boat. So this cabin is the second VIP. We're now on the starboard side, and this cabin actually uh, mirrors the one that we just showed you on the port side. Uh, it's identical to that one. Wrapping up in here, we're next gonna check out the galley. So over here we have a, a galley. It's a chef dream uh, space. There's a lot of room to to help preparing all the dishes. Over here we have the microwave oven, as well as the gas cooktop. So and then on this side we have a double sink and the dishwasher machine over this size. Directly across from the dinette, we've got two nice refrigerators slash freezers. Each one has four drawers and then a, a full size refrigerator. Right here, you're gonna have a nice pocket door so you can close the uh, galley off from the rest of the guest accommodations. Another nice feature that you're gonna find in here is underfoot, you've got two very large storage bins underneath the sole here in the galley. And uh, last but not least, we've got a really nice bilge down here that accommodates all the uh, tanks throughout the boat and a lot of the technical uh, features found on board. We have two boilers, one on each in each compartment plus the diesel tank, water tank, uh, fresh water pump. And on starboard side, we still have the black water treatment plants. And on the port side, we have, instead of having the, the treatment plant, we have an air compressor. A cool structural feature about the NDSE is that you've got a clear line of sight all the way through from the aft guest accommodation right through the galley, uh, walking forward into the first uh, crew accommodation. We have a TV, like uh, all the cabins have. We have two washing and drying machines. Uh, plenty of room for the cleaning products. Um, forward, we have the captain cabin. So these two cabins both share a toilet and a shower. It's nice to have them separated that way. That way if a crew member can get ready while the other one's brushing his teeth or whatever you need to do. And then working your way forward a little bit more, we get into the captain's cabin. Here in the captain's cabin, you've got three 
hanging lockers, full-size bed with storage underneath and a large TV on the forward bulkhead. Another thing that I wanted to point out down here in the captain's cabin is that he's got a couple repeaters here from the wheelhouse letting him know uh, what the wind speed is, what their heading is, if there's any uh, anchor dragging, and he can just keep it overall a, a sight on everything that's going on on board the monitoring system. Thank you for joining Captain Duarte, myself this afternoon on board the NDSC. If you have any questions, please contact me directly. Thank you.